Welcome to everyone. It's a pleasure to have uh, Riccardo Muolo from uh, well, Italian, but from Belgium, visiting us here in Rio for a period of one and a half months. So we hope to see you all in the near future. So Riccardo is a uh, is currently working on with uh, Timoteo Carletti on problem of graph, hypergraph, topology of network. So it will be a great pleasure to have this mini course from him today. Please, Ricardo. Thank you, uh, Professor Boasto. Thank you all for, uh, for coming. So, uh, Again, first of all, thank you to the professor for organizing uh, for organizing this and for hosting me uh, in her group. Uh, and also thanks to my supervisor who it's thanks to their collaboration that I'm able to be here and also the Royal Academy and the FNRS of Belgium who are funding my uh, my staying. Uh, so uh, I will uh, first thing I will give this course on the board. Uh, so for you online, someone else wants to be a meet. I, I, I did a meet. Oh, okay. So uh, if I don't speak loud enough, or uh, if you don't see an equation because I write too little, or I'm standing in the way too long, just don't hesitate to write it in the chat. So uh, the professor will take care of it and. Uh, they will tell me, so I will repeat uh, or rewrite what I what I need to or what I wanted to say, and then also uh, as I believe this uh, uh, will stay on YouTube, right? Yes. So please, if I make a mistake, let me know. Also, you in the audience. So I mean, I don't have the right to oblivion. I don't have the privilege of oblivion. So let me know. Okay. So uh, the topic of this mini course is. Turing instability. So you probably all know Alan Turing uh, for his works on uh, computer science. He's considered the father of modern uh, computer. He's a war hero uh, as he helped decipher, decrypted the, the Nazi code during World War II. Uh, but in so he's, uh, he was born in 1912 and died in 1954. And his story is, uh, is very interesting and also tragic. So I encourage you to check it out. Um, so in 1952, so two years before dying, uh, he published a paper in the framework of mathematical biology. Uh, so the, the issue was morphogenesis, which is uh, the branch of developmental biology um, whose objective is to determine how the embryo is formed. Uh, because at that time, uh, one of the main issues, well, there were, as today, many scientific issues, but one of the main issues was to give account for this uh, self-organization that we observe in, uh, in natural system and also in artificial engineering system. So we, we see patterns, we see uh, emergence of collective behaviors like in the flocking of birds or synchronization of fireflies. Uh, and one example was the formation of, of the embryo. So the question was, how is it possible that uh, so for active matter, like flocking of birds, that's another issue. But for inactive matter, so chemical reaction, how is it possible that they self-organize and they exhibit order? And so, well, of course, there was statistical mechanics that uh, gave many examples of this emergent behavior. But then Turing uh, had an idea. And with a simple mathematical model, he uh, was able to prove uh, that actually it was possible to have self-organization. So uh, Turing uh, mechanism takes a system of two species, 
two chemical species. Uh, then it goes beyond that, but uh, it started with uh, with chemistry. Uh, and these species are in a homogeneous, stable equilibrium. Okay, so the system is in a stable, homogeneous uh, state. And then the thing that is very interesting, and we will see with the, with the details, is that after a perturbation, the diffusion is responsible for an instability that drives the system away from the homogeneous equilibrium and have patterns. So I find this extremely interesting because usually diffusion is what stabilizes a system, what homo homogenizes, but in this case is responsible for uh, an inhomogeneous state. So this was, is very counterintuitive, but uh, that's what uh, Turing proved uh, uh, mathematically. And so before going to the mathematical details, just an intuitive description of the, the mechanism. So we have two chemical species. This is the formulation of Gierhard and Meinhard of 1972. So this was a later uh, interpretation. So all these results were already there, but Turing didn't yet give this interpretation. So one species is an activator, okay? So it self-activates and also activates the other species. So activates the, the reaction. So the first one is an activator and the other one is an inhibitor. So it inhibits itself and it also inhibits the activator, okay? So for example, if you, if you think of, uh, not on chemical reaction, but on praise, praise and predator. Okay, we have that the activator of the reaction is the prey because you can assume that they self-activate, they just need uh, plants, grass to, to, to reproduce. Uh, and they also activate the inhibitor because the inhibitor can eat the prey and uh, so grow, but then the inhibitor inhibits itself because without the praise, it dies. And then also inhibits the activator because it controls the population of the prey. So this is the, the intuition behind it. And then again, Gerhard and Meinhardt, uh, they uh, noticed that actually the diffusion that is responsible for this mechanism has to be asymmetric. So the activator has to diffuse slower than the inhibitor. So this is the diffusion in a domain. Sorry, so diffusion, and the inhibitor has to diffuse way faster. So today uh, I will go through the basics of Turing theory, not too formal, but yeah, I will point you to more formal references for those of you who are interested. Uh, and then next time we will see instability on uh, on networks which will be the main uh, the main topic of this uh, this mini course and then uh, next time i also will tell you how i will uh, i will proceed uh, next week okay so uh, we are talking about reaction diffusion system I believe that someone does not have the mic uh, on. Mic off. Okay. Yes, okay. Okay. Um, and those were the equations studied by Turing. So uh, let's start uh, with getting to the, to the equation that Turing uh, studied. Okay, so uh, we start with the law of mass section uh, that says that uh, the rate of a chemical reaction is proportional to the molecular concentration. So if we have a certain concentration, depending on, uh, on time, 
we have that this concentration varies with a certain law that depends on the concentration itself, okay? So with F nonlinear, otherwise it's not too interesting and also not very relevant physically because it diverges or it goes to zero. Mm. And then we can see that there's no space. So this is just, let's say a well-stirred uh, homogeneous uh, domain. So the concentration depends only on time. In every point of a certain domain, we have the same concentration, which varies according to, to a law. Now, if we add uh, space, so we consider a domain omega, open subset, non uh, empty over Rn. So for simplicity, we will just take a volume of R3 bounded by an orientable surface sigma whose normal is N hat. Okay, now in this domain, we can write uh, the continuity equation. So we have the total concentration of, uh, so this U, I will try to write as good as possible uh, that for those who know me, you know, it's very difficult. So U depending on X and T in the volume. We want to see how this concentration varies in time. And for, from the continuity equation, we have that this is equal to minus the flux from the surface. So we have the normal, the scalar product between the normal and uh, uh, the flux uh, J. So this is the transport uh, term. And then we have what is called, so again, on the volume, the source term. Okay, so we have the, the total variation of the concentration is the volume in, in the volume is given of how much how much substance enters or uh, goes out or exits the the surface bound the, the domain, and then what happens inside the domain. Uh, so what happens to the to this species? How this species is produced or or uh, degraded? And so now I have to delete every time. So then uh, let me know if you need me to rewrite something because yeah, I only have one board. Uh, one assumption that I will make now and we stand for, uh, for all the, the mini course. And if I forget to say it again, it will always stand is that all the functions have the good properties of regularity. So you can exchange the integral and derivative and uh, etc. Uh, so we can, uh, first of all, we can apply the, the divergence theorem to the integral of, on surface. And then we can uh, bring the, the derivative inside the integral. So we have that what happens in the volume is described by uh, so the variation of u in time. Okay, then here we have the divergence theorem. So this is equal to minus the integral on the volume of the divergence of the transport in the volume. So if we bring it on the other side, we have the divergence of the of the current. Sorry. Uh, minus the function describing the dynamics and then all integral equals zero. So now the, the volume is, uh, is arbitrary. So this equation is valid, not only globally in the volume, but also locally. Okay, so we can rewrite. 
So the derivative of the concentration, we can bring everything again on the, on the other side. We have F u of x t, and then minus the divergence on the transport of the um, current. And now we are almost there. To give a form of the current, we use a fixed law. So, okay, I will write here, you should see, yes, fixed law of diffusion that gives an explicit form of the, of the current. So the current is equal to minus a certain coefficient d of u that is called the diffusivity. It's a positive, uh, it's a const positive constant that depends on the, on the species times the gradient of u. No, only one parameter, sorry. Okay. So now if we plug the expression of j, we have, we are done, we have our reaction with an equation. F of uh, u x t plus diffusion coefficient. So this is a this is a d d u. So the um, the divergence of the gradient is the Nabla square, so the Laplacian of u x t. Yeah, you sh yeah. So this is the equation of a species in a certain domain, on a concentration of u. So the variation of the concentration of a substance in a given. Uh, so this is, of course, uh, valid also globally, but also. Uh, uh, so sorry, this is valid locally, so also globally. Uh, is given by how this fun, this uh, certain substance is produced or degraded. So how this this substance evolves and how it diffuses in a certain domain. Okay, and so we see from the Laplacian that this problem depends on the geometry that that we have. Okay, so today I will uh, work with this uh, with this equation. So Turing started from a system a system of two species. Okay, so we have species one, U activator and species V inhibitor. And we can write the equations, the U, the T, I will omit the dependence on uh, space and time is equal to a certain function F. Now F will depend on both variables, on both concentration, U and V plus du nabla squared u, and then the equation for species v with now another function g, diffusion coefficient of species v, and then Laplacian of v. Okay, so we have two species in a certain domain, Again, an open subset of Rn. In this domain, we have these two species that they interact with each other locally. So point by point, they have a certain dynamics that is nonlinear. Uh, and then they diffuse in the domain. And usually uh, these systems are studied with von Neumann conditions. So the no flux. So the normal to the surface, okay, so we have that uh, sigma is a surface bound, uh, re regular orientable surface bounding omega whose normal is M. And so we have the zero flux condition. So the scalar product between the normal and the gradient 
of, uh, of u is zero and the same of v. And this is the system studied by, by Turing, except for the uh, names activator and inhibitor that were interpreted after. And so from here, we could take many different uh, roles. There is a more rigorous discussion based on uh, PDEs. I will not go to that. Uh, and then also uh, the book of Murray, Mathematical Biology, solves it in a more rigorous uh, way. I put the chapter in the, in the Dropbox. So if you're interested to this, you can, uh, there are lots of things that are still done uh, in this, uh, in this field, depending on the form of F and G, you have interesting things regarding existence and unicity of solutions. You have different geometries. You can actually um, study more realistic models. So I will not take this, uh, this road also because I don't know much of PDs. Uh, I will study a much simpler system. I will study a one dimensional system with periodic boundary conditions. So basically the domain is a ring because well, it, it's simpler and also I don't know if it is so. <laughs> uh, and then also because from this, it's much easier to move to networks as you will see next time or maybe at the end of the day. Okay. So, I will not rewrite any, everything, but now the system is uh, is basically the same as before, but instead of the operator NABLA, I can simply write the second spatial derivative for both species. Uh, sorry, x squared. And then, so the periodic conditions. Uh, so, u of x plus l, where l is the length of the, of the ring, t is equal to u x t, and the same for v. And then also their um, derivative, their special derivative, Uh, u x plus l t x and the same for v. Okay, now finally we can get to during theory. Okay, so this is the system that we are studying. You can already see just a spoiler for uh, next time, okay? That if we go from this to a network, to a 1D lattice, we already have a one dimensional system with periodic boundary conditions. Okay, so I will delete everything except the, um, reaction diffusion system. So, for Turing theory, we need a stable, homogeneous equilibrium. That's the first thing that we need. So let us take a homogeneous solution, U and V. So for every point in the domain, we have the same concentration of species U and species V. This means that the spatial derivatives 
are zero and also the temporal derivative and that for both species then we need this to be an equilibrium point so we assume that for both functions this is an equilibrium point So we have a homogeneous equilibrium. Now we need to impose the stability. So we can linearize by, uh, so we can consider the, the linear system associated to the nonlinear system on this equilibrium by considering the Jacobian matrix, which is FU, F B G U G B, where F U and that the same for the other uh, for the other three is the derivative of F with respect to U calculated in the homogeneous uh, so in the in the equilibrium point, and so now we take. We have a linear system, the linearized version of the system in case of homogeneous equilibrium. Uh, we have U V derivative is equal to J0 Jacobian matrix U V. And so now. We know that the equilibrium point, unless a pathological case that we don't have, of this linearized system is valid also for the nonlinear system for the Hartmann Grobman theorem, at least locally. So we are sure that what we find for this is also valid for this. And we have stability. This linear system is stable if the trace is negative. And the determinant of the matrix is positive. Okay, so linear stability. So the conditions for so the first thing we need for Turing instability to have a we need a stable homogeneous equilibrium. This is obtained if F U plus G V is negative. And if FU times GV minus FB GU positive. Okay, first and second condition. Okay, now we are in a stable uh, homogeneous equilibrium. How do we activate diffusion? We need to perturb the system in a neighborhood of this homogeneous equilibrium with a small perturbation. And this perturbation needs to be inhomogeneous because if we perturb with an homogeneous, per a homogeneous perturbation, again, we have that the spatial derivative is zero. So I hope I'm not going too slow. Um, now, we have a perturbation delta u that now depends on space. Uh, sorry. So now our u of xt is equal to u star, the homogeneous uh, state, plus a small perturbation which depends on space, so it's different in every point. And the same for B. So in this way, we activate, we say that we activate the diffusion that was silent because there was no gradient. So. Uh, of, of concentration, so there was no, there was no diffusion. 
So now, if we plug this into the system, we obtain that the derivative, spatial derivative is still zero for U star and V star, but not for the perturbation. And the same for the space. So the time derivative and the space derivative. And then F and G, I will do it for F, then for G is the same. We can write F of U star plus delta U, V star plus delta V. We can linearly expand at the first order with respect to both variables because the functions are differentiable, regular. Of course, then it's interesting to see what happens if the functions are not regular, but this is another line of, of research. So we have F of U star V star. And then we have the derivative of F with respect to U calculated in U star. So that's exactly FU as we wrote before times delta U. And then the same for the variable V times delta V. But this is zero because U star V star uh, was an equilibrium point. Okay, and then the same for uh, for G. So now we can rewrite uh, the same system, reaction diffusion system, now for the perturbation in the linear regime. Okay, so this is valid as long as T is very small. But then it's enough because we want to see what happens uh, near the, the, the equilibrium point. So then when uh, we go away, it's not that we don't care, but we cannot uh, anything. Mm. Okay, sorry, there was someone who was not muted. Uh, we can see it numerically, we cannot do much. Uh, so we rewrite the system. Now for the evolution of the perturbation, so we have derivative, time derivative of delta u is equal, if I'm not writing big enough, just write it in the chat. Um, delta t, so derivative uh, with respect to time of delta u, f u delta u plus f v delta v. Plus the diffusion coefficient is the same because we are still talking about species U. And then the second space derivative of delta U. And then the same for delta V. Now we have the function G. So G U delta U plus G V delta V plus the, the second space derivative delta V, where F U, F V, G U, G V are those who satisfy this, uh, this condition. Now, still, as I told you, I don't know PDs, so I, I don't like this system, still. I'm not happy because to solve it, we need PDs. Is there a way to, make it even simpler so that even I can solve it. Uh, yes, actually there are two ways, uh, probably more. So one is more elegant uh, and we will see it next time. So Thursday uh, for networks and otherwise you can find it on, uh, on the book uh, Mathematical Biology that is to develop to expand the perturbation on the eigenbasis of the Laplacian. I prefer another way. It's even uh, cooler, I think, because we can use the Fourier transform and so work 
in the space instead of x in the space of k, that is the wave number. And then things in that space are much simpler. So because we use a particular property of the Fourier transform. So the Fourier transform of the nth derivative of a function of x, the Fourier transform sends the function of f in the space of, of k, the wave number. This is i k to the n power of the Fourier transform of the function. I'm sorry, I will rewrite it bigger. Of the Fourier transform of the function, spin function of k. So we see with this, we get rid of the derivative. So now, if we take the Fourier transform of this system and we send it into the space of the, of the wave number, we have a much simpler uh, problem. And we have time derivative of delta u k, meaning that the perturbation is in the space of the wave number, is equal to f u delta u k plus f v delta v k. And now we have a second derivative. So it's i k squared, so minus k squared d u delta u k. And then for v, delta v k derivative g u delta u k and then g v delta v k minus k squared dv delta v k so now from pdes we have all these and actually we can write this in a more compact form, what's the variable I've used? Because then I, I need other variables. Um, yeah, so uh, if I call Greek uh, Z, K, the vector of delta U K and delta V K, I can now write zk derivative is equal to jk zk, where now jk is j0, the matrix I already know everything about, minus k squared and the diagonal matrix of the diffusion coefficient. Okay, so I then, okay, I, I studied a simple case of one dimensional uh, domain, but then from a PDE, I now have a linear system in the Fourier space, but then for what happens in the, in the neighborhood of, of, the, of the equilibrium point, we don't care. We just care to see if the perturbation destabilizes the equilibrium or not. So if after perturbation, the system goes away from the equilibrium or goes back, and for this, I can use the same technique I used before. So linear stability analysis. So the st stability of, of linear systems. So we know that the trace of J0 is negative and its determinant is positive. I have an homogeneous equilibrium, sta uh, homogeneous stable equilibrium. Now I want to see if with the perturbation, I can have instability. 
So if the perturbation can drive the system away, so I need JK to be an unstable matrix. And actually, this instability is called Turing instability. So we can see already that the trace of JK is negative because the trace of J0 is negative, And here I have minus something that is positive. OK? So the only way to make this system unstable is to have determinant negative because it, it would be in this case with trace so I already know that the trace is negative. It would be a settled point. And also what is interesting is that without a wave number, so if K is equal to zero, we don't have the perturbation, we have the system without space. So the isolated system. Um, completely homogeneous if K is zero. Okay, so what we need is to find this. We need to impose that for some case, the maximum of the real part of lambda one, is positive. So the two lambdas are a solution of, uh, of the equation lambda square minus trace of jk lambda plus determinant of jk equals zero. I don't know how much time I have left. No, I, I will not do all the calculations. I have until 20 minutes. Yeah, ah, okay, then yeah, then I can I can do it. So we need to find the two lambdas. Okay, assuming that we all remember this, then of course I, I will I will need something uh, <laughs> during the calculations that I, I'm now deleting. So, where are the real parts of the eigenvalue to be positive? Yes, at least one. One. No, no. I, I cannot have both because it's a settled point. But yeah. So in principle, I don't know if for some k one eigenvalue is positive, and in fact, no. I don't always have Turing instability. It depends on uh, many things. But you know for sure the one is negative. I know for sure that one is negative. Yes. So actually, I should have said it better. We know because we have imposed it that the determinant of the J0 is positive and the trace of J0 is negative. But this determinant of JK uh, greater than zero is something I'm imposing. So I know here I have lambda one and lambda two real part negative. If for some k this is positive, for some k one of the two will be positive. So this will migrate to be positive. Okay. Uh, thanks for the question. Um, so now uh, we can write explicitly so lambda squared, here I have the trace. So it's uh, fu plus gv minus k squared um, du plus dv lambda. And then plus the other term I need to 
look at it. So I have fu minus k squared du f v minus k squared dv. Yes. And then I have minus f v and g u equals zero. So I, I can rewrite this part. So I have a term in k to the four. So I have du dv k to the fourth. Then I have a, ter a term in k squared du gv plus dv fu k squared. And then I have the plus the determinant of j0 because here I have, sorry, this is g. It's fu times gv, and then I have minus fdgu. So this is a polynomial of degree two in k squared. So now the expression, explicit expression for lambda one, two has the usual formula, but there is something interesting we can see from it. So lambda one, two, And then we have b, so the coefficient b of the of the parabola in, in lambda. So we have trace of j zero, this one minus k squared du dv. Uh, I will yeah delete this. Remember just that it's a polynomial of grade two in k squared. Then we have plus minus the square root of the same thing. So trace j zero minus k squared. Um, o squared. And then I have minus four h of k squared. So that should be correct. It's a bit tedious, but once in a lifetime, uh, one should do it. Ah, and then, of course, close parentheses. So what can we see from here? So the first thing that uh, I said before, that one eigenvalue is always negative, because the trace, we know it's negative. And here we have negative minus something positive. So this part is always negative. So it means that one root is always negative. Now, what is interesting, I think, is that now here we have something positive. So we are able to have one of the two roots positive only if for some case h is negative. This means that all the quantity under the square root needs to be positive, which means that if there is an instability, it's not oscillatory because there is no imaginary part, okay? So if we imagine we have our system in the, in the neighborhood of the equilibrium, we perturb, this is the U B, okay? The trajectories, if they go away, they go away, exponentially, of course, without oscillating. We can have oscillations, but towards the equilibrium. Because if there is an imaginary part, both roots are negative, and so we oscillate towards the equilibrium, okay? We need at least three species to have what is called wave instability, or other additional hypotheses that uh, we will see later on. Um, okay, so uh, now 
we need to impose that this quantity is negative for some k, for some k squared. So I will rewrite the explicit form of the polynomial H of the parabola. So du dv k to the fourth minus du dv plus dv a few k to the four uh, to the second plus determinant of j zero. So I will not do all the calculations so I can uh, comment with an example, but I will just give you a trace on how to prove it. It's just algebraic calculations. Okay, so this is positive, the first term. So it's a parabola with positive concavity. So let's say we want to study h of k squared. Am I writing well enough? No, nobody's complaining in the chat. Okay. K squared. K squared is positive, so we only have one axis. Okay. Determinant of j is positive, so we start from here. We need to have some case for which, so we know that it goes in this direction. We need to impose that there is an interval of k's that is negative. So to do this, we need to impose that the minimum of the parabola, so the minimum is minus b over 2a. Yes, so minus b over 2a, given a parabola a x squared plus bx plus c equals 0. Okay, and so we need that for this value is negative. So we have a certain k squared minimum, minimum that is equal to uh, exactly minus b. So this coefficient is b and we have du gv plus dv fu over four times uh, two times a so two du dv this needs to be positive because it's k squared cannot be negative and so we already have the first condition so the third we have the trace of the j0 then determinant this is the third condition this to be positive. And now we need that h of k squared minimum. So with this value, this to be negative. And with some computations, you can uh, try at home. Uh, I will give you the expression if I did all the calculations correctly. You should find the fourth condition that is minus the u g v plus d v f u square over four d u d v first term and then plus the determinant of j0, this needs to be negative. Okay, so I'm almost done with what I wanted to say. Maybe I will do the example uh, Thursday. Uh, so the union of the conditions one and two that we saw before, they give the conditions for the homogeneous stable equilibrium. Conditions three and four, plus one and two, of course, they give that there are necessary and sufficient conditions for Turing instability. 
So if these conditions that depend on the diffusion coefficient of the species and on the model parameters are satisfied, we have Turing instability, meaning that perturbing a system in an homogeneous stable equilibrium, we have instability. We, yeah? Please correspond to these two points. No, 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 no. These two, if these two are verified, so if this is positive and this is uh, yeah. negative, it means that there exists yeah. an interval yeah. of wave numbers for which yeah. this is, ah, yeah, okay, yeah. And we can see it with something that is called dispersion relation. That is probably the most important thing of today that maybe I should have said a few minutes ago and not right on the photo finish. Uh, uh, sorry, but when you have the negative H, you're going to be able to have the positive. Really yeah, positive exactly. So the interval is K1. So I don't know if online you heard what uh, what he said. So he said, if I have the uh, negative H, then I have positive eigenvalues. Yes, that's exactly what, uh, what we have. So now if we have the real part of lambda, so the eigenvalue of, uh, of the matrix uh, JK function of uh, K or K squared doesn't really matter. We just know that on the X axis, we have K squared. So the system without space is on a stable equilibrium. So it means that this function starts negative, okay? And then if this condition is satisfied, we have an interval of K for which this is positive. And those k's are the same. So the two critical k's are exactly the same. And this is called dispersion relation. If some of you know about synchronization dynamics, you may have heard of the master stability function. They're not exactly the same thing because the master stability function is the maximum Lyapunov exponent as a function of the coupling. Here at the end, it's not exactly the maximum Lyapunov exponent because the maximum Lyapunov exponent is, is real here. We need to impose that it's, uh, that it's real. Uh, but then at the end, yeah, it is a master stability function. It means something more because this K is the wave number. So it affects how uh, the, the instability is dispersed, and so how the pattern is uh, is shaped. Okay, so there are two things left that I will do next time. I will start with that. Uh, next time, I will uh, show you I will, that we need the inhibitor to diffuse faster than the activator. So dV has to be greater than du. And actually, in practice, has to be much faster than du. So Turing uh, published his work in 1952 and experimental patterns were obtained more than 50 years later in Belgium. There's all a line of Belgian uh, chemists, one of which the Ilya Prigozhin made the more invented the model that I will uh, uh, that I will tell you about uh, next time. Uh, and so this condition is very, very strict, and it's in contrast with the abundance of pattern that we observe. So there is there are many ways of relaxing these conditions, adding physical assumptions. For example, we can add, as maybe we will see at the end, a finite propagation to the signal, because with the fixed, the fixed equation, we have an instant propagation. We can add noise in the equation. 
because natural systems are uh, are intrinsically stochastic, chemical reactions, bio biochemical reaction, etc. Okay, and the good thing is that every time that we add physical hypotheses, it's easier to have patterns. Patterns. So I like this because to me it means at least that it's a good theory. Okay. Okay. So yeah, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, people online. Thank you. And if you have any question. Uh, so some question from online, some question from here. You can open your microphone if you want. What, what was very clear. Thank you. <laughs> very, very good lecture. So this is why we, we don't have any extra. And we are very much looking forward for the next. Thank you. To know the, the follow up of the story. So we will be back on Thursday. The same time, one o'clock here. Uh, one o'clock, not a bit. Uh... Yes. Well, okay. one o'clock okay. is after the people. Okay. <laughs> Roughly one o'clock, we have this breaking highs first. And then uh, uh, and then also the next week, we will have other two lectures. I just want to stress that this semester, we will have uh, other two mini courses on networks. And so one is from uh, Cynthia de Oliveira, and the other is from Lorenzo uh, Giambagli from Florence. So it will be a very, very interesting uh, semester once more. So thank you very much to everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you.